Voyager 2 is a space probe launched by NASA on August 20, 1977 to study the outer planets and interstellar space beyond the sun's heliosphere. A part of the Voyager program was launched 16 days before its twin, Voyager 1, on a trajectory that took longer to reach gas giants Jupiter and Saturn, but enabled further encounters with ice giants Uranus and Neptune. What is Voyager 2? NASA's Voyager 2 is the second spacecraft to enter interstellar space. On December 10, 2018, the spacecraft joined its twin, Voyager 1, as the only human-made object to enter the space between the stars. It remains the only spacecraft to have visited a combination of either of the gas giants and both ice giant planets. Voyager 2 was the fourth of five spacecraft to achieve the solar escape velocity, which allowed it to leave the solar system. Stay tuned to learn everything about the Voyager 2 and its discoveries in space. Voyager 1 and 2 were designed to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment to study the outer solar system up close. Voyager 2 targeted Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Like its sister spacecraft, Voyager 2 was also designed to find and study the edge of our solar system. In-depth, Voyager 2 the two spacecraft Voyager missions were designed to replace original plans for a grand tour of the planets that would have used four highly complex spacecraft to explore the five outer planets during the late 1970s. NASA canceled the plan in January 1972, largely due to anticipated costs, projected at $1 billion, and instead proposed to launch only two spacecraft in 1977 to Jupiter and Saturn. The two spacecraft were designed to explore the two gas giants in more detail than the two Pioneers, Pioneers 10 and 11, that preceded them. In 1974, mission planners proposed a mission in which, if the first Voyager was successful, the second one could be redirected to Uranus and then Neptune using gravity assist maneuvers. Each of the two spacecraft was equipped with a slow-scan color TV camera to take images of the planets and their moons, and each also carried an extensive suite of instruments to record magnetic, atmospheric, lunar, and other data about the planetary systems. The design of the two spacecraft was based on the older Mariners, and they were known as Mariner 11 and Mariner 12 until March 7, 1977, when NASA Administrator James C. Fletcher (1919–1991) announced that they would be renamed Voyager. Power was provided by three plutonium dioxide radioisotope thermoelectric generators RTGs, mounted at the end of a boom. Voyager 2 began transmitting images of Jupiter April 24, 1979, four time-lapse movies of atmospheric circulation. Unlike Voyager 1, Voyager 2 made close passes to the Jovian moons on its way into the system, with scientists especially interested in more information from Europa and Io, which necessitated a 10-hour-long volcano watch. During its encounter, it relayed back spectacular photos of the entire Jovian system, including its moons Callisto, Ganymede, Europa, at a range of about 127,830 miles or 205,720 kilometers, much closer than Voyager 1, Io and Amathea, all of which had already been surveyed by Voyager 1. Voyager 2's closest encounter to Jupiter was at 2229 UT, July 9, 1979 at a range of about 400,785 miles, 645,000 kilometers. It transmitted new data on the planet's clouds, its newly discovered four moons, ring system, and 17,000 new pictures. When the earlier pioneers flew by Jupiter, they detected few atmospheric changes from one encounter to the second. But Voyager 2 detected many significant changes, including a drift in the Great Red Spot, as well as changes in its shape and color. With the combined cameras of the two Voyagers, at least 80% of the surfaces of Ganymede and Callisto were mapped out to a resolution of about 3 miles, 5 kilometers. Following a course correction two hours after its closest approach to Jupiter, Voyager 2 sped to Saturn, its trajectory determined to a large degree by a decision made in January 1981 to try to send the spacecraft to Uranus and Neptune later in the decade. Its encounter with the sixth planet began August 22, 1981 two years after leaving the Jovian system with imaging of the moon Iapetus. Once again, Voyager 2 repeated the photographic mission of its predecessor, although it actually flew about 14,290 miles 23,000 kilometers, closer to Saturn. The closest encounter to Saturn was at 0121 UT August 26, 1981, at a range of about 63,000 miles 101,000 kilometers. The spacecraft provided more detailed images of the ring's spokes and kinks, 
and also the Efring and its shepherding moons, all found by Voyager 1. Voyager 2's data suggested that Saturn A's ring was perhaps only about 980 feet 300 meters thick. As it flew behind and up past Saturn, the probe passed through the plane of Saturn's rings at a speed of 8 miles per second, 13 kilometers per second. For several minutes during this phase, the spacecraft was hit by thousands of micron-sized dust grains that created puff plasma as they were vaporized. Because the vehicle's attitude was repeatedly shifted by the particles, attitude control jets automatically fired many times to stabilize the vehicle. During the encounter, Voyager 2 also photographed the Saturn moon Hyperion, the Hamburger moon, Enceladus, Tatis, Phoebe, and the more recently discovered Helen, Tallisto, and Calypso. Although Voyager 2 had fulfilled its primary mission goals with the two planetary encounters, mission planners directed the veteran spacecraft to Uranus, a journey that would take about four and a half years. Its encounter with Jupiter was optimized in part to ensure that the future planetary flybys would be possible. The Uranus encounter's geometry was also defined by the possibility of a future encounter with Neptune. Voyager 2 had only five and a half hours of close study during its flyby. Voyager 2 was the first human-made object to fly past the planet Uranus. Long-range observations of the planet began November 4, 1985, when signals took approximately two and a half hours to reach Earth. Light conditions were 400 times less than terrestrial conditions. Closest approach to Uranus took place at 1759 UT, January 24, 1986, at a range of about 50,640 miles, 81,500 kilometers. During its flyby, Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons, given such names as Puck, Portia, Juliet, Cressida, Rosalind, Belinda, Desdemonia, Cordelia, Ophelia, and Bianca. Obvious allusions to Shakespeare. Two new rings in addition to the older nine rings in a magnetic field tilted at 55 degrees off axis and off center. The spacecraft found wind speeds in Uranus' atmosphere as high as 450 miles per hour, 724 kilometers per hour and found evidence of a boiling ocean of water some 497 miles, 800 kilometers, below the top cloud surface. Its rings were found to be extremely variable in thickness and opacity. Voyager 2 also returned spectacular photos of Miranda, Oberon, Ariel, Umbriel, and Titania, five of Uranus's larger moons. In flying by Miranda at a range of only 17,560 miles, 28,260 kilometers, the spacecraft came closest to any object so far in its nearly decade-long travels. Images of the moon showed a strange object whose surface was a mishmash of peculiar features that seemed to have no rhyme or reason. Uranus itself appeared generally featureless. The spectacular news of the Uranus encounter was interrupted the same week by the tragic Challenger accident that killed seven astronauts during their space shuttle launch January 28, 1986. Following the Uranus encounter, the spacecraft performed a single mid-course correction February 14, 1986, the largest ever made by Voyager 2, to set it on a precise course to Neptune. Voyager 2's encounter with Neptune capped a 4.3 billion mile journey when, on August 25, 1989, at 0356 UT, it flew about 2,980 miles over the cloud tops of the giant planet, the closest of its four flybys. It was the first human-made object to fly by the planet. Its 10 instruments were still in working order at the time. The spacecraft discovered six new moons, Porteus, Larissa, Despina, Galadia, Thalassa, and Nyad, and four new rings during the encounter. The planet itself was found to be more active than previously believed, with 680 mile per hour winds. Hydrogen was found to be the most common atmospheric element, although the abundant methane gave the planet its blue appearance. Images revealed details of the three major features in the planetary clouds, the Lesser Dark Spot, the Great Dark Spot, and Scooter. Voyager photographed two-thirds of Neptune's largest moon, Triton, revealing the coldest known planetary body in the solar system and a nitrogen ice volcano on its surface. Spectacular images of its southern hemisphere showed a strange, pitted cantaloupe-type terrain. The flyby of Neptune concluded Voyager 2's planetary encounters, which spanned an amazing 12 years in deep space virtually accomplishing the originally planned grand tour of the solar system, at least in terms of targets reached, if not in science accomplished. Once past the Neptune system, Voyager 2 followed a course below the ecliptic plane and out of the solar system. Approximately 35 million miles past the encounter, 
Voyager 2's instruments were put in low power mode to conserve energy. After the Neptune encounter, NASA formally renamed the entire project the Voyager Interstellar Mission VIM. Of the four spacecraft sent out to beyond the environs of the solar system in the 1970s, three of them, Voyagers 1 and 2 and Pioneer 11, were all heading in the direction of the solar apex, i.e. the apparent direction of the Sun's travel in the Milky Way galaxy, and thus would be expected to reach the heliopause earlier than Pioneer 10, which was headed in the direction of the heliospheric tail. In November 1998, 21 years after launch, non-essential instruments were permanently turned off, leaving seven instruments still operating. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory JPL, continued to receive ultraviolet and particle fields data through the turn of the century. For example, on January 12, 2001, an immense shockwave that had blasted out of the outer heliosphere on July 14, 2000, finally reached Voyager 2. The shockwave had plowed through the solar system wind during its six-month journey, sweeping up and accelerating charged particles. The spacecraft provided important information on high-energy shock-energized ions. On August 30, 2007, Voyager 2 passed the termination shock and then entered the helio sheath. By November 5, 2017, the spacecraft was 116.167 AU, about 10.8 billion miles, or about 17.378 billion kilometers from Earth moving at a velocity of 9.6 miles per second relative to the Sun, heading in the direction of the Constellation Telescopium. At this velocity, it would take about 19,390 years to traverse a single light year. On July 8, 2019, Voyager 2 successfully fired up its trajectory correction maneuver thrusters and will be using them to control the pointing of the spacecraft for the foreseeable future. Voyager 2 last used those thrusters during its encounter with Neptune in 1989. The spacecraft's aging attitude thrusters have been experiencing degradation that required them to fire an increasing and untenable number of pulses to keep the spacecraft's antenna pointed at Earth. Voyager 1 had switched to its trajectory correction maneuver thrusters for the same reason in January 2018. To ensure that both vintage robots continue to return the best scientific data possible from the frontiers of space, mission engineers are implementing a new plan to manage them. The plan will involve making difficult choices, particularly about instruments and thrusters. Interstellar Accomplishments A gravity assist at Neptune shot Voyager 2 below the plane in which the planets orbit the Sun, on a course out of the solar system. NASA announced in December 2018 that Voyager 2 had entered interstellar space the second spacecraft to do so after sister ship Voyager 1. As of July 2019, Voyager 2 continued to return data from five instruments as it travels through interstellar space. Eventually, there will not be enough electricity to power even one instrument. Then, Voyager 2 will silently continue its eternal journey among the stars. Now that you've watched the video, let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks!